we have we have we have deviated. We 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 really are far, you know. So so I really want us right now to pray for grace to stick on the path of the word, not to turn to the left or to the right. You know, I've come to learn there are things in the word when you practice them, it seems like you are disadvantaged at that moment. It seems like you are disadvantaged at that moment. But as you practice the word, you realize this is actually God's wisdom. You are not disadvantaged. It's actually working to your advantage. There are things, you know, God instructs us to do. I mean, he, he tells us to love our neighbors. You know, there, there's so many things that God instructs us to do. If you think about him, about it, you would think, ah, man, this thing um, it is disadvantaging me. Why should I do this? You know, uh, I mean, uh, an example of giving. You know, the Bible says, give. It shall be given unto you good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. So shall men give unto your bosom. You're thinking, why should I give? Why should I give? Because I, I, I also am, am in need. I also have my own needs. Why should I give? But you see, the Bible says it's to your advantage. It's to your advantage. So there are things we do where we find ourselves normal. Uh, maybe I should do it this way. Maybe my way is better than God's way. Maybe the world's way is better than God's way. As we deviate, then we find later on, my goodness, we are far from the will of God. So I want us to take our first prayer point, you know, from verse seven, where we say, God, teach us you know, to, to live according to your word, not to deviate, even those areas. For example, the Bible says, husband, love your wives. You know, sometimes, uh, you know, husbands might feel, oh man, I don't feel like loving today. Well, you don't have a choice. It's an instruction. If you deviate from that instruction, later on, you'll realize I have costed myself, you know, so long a time. The Bible instructs us to honor those in authority, you know, uh, uh, to pray for them. It might seem like foolishness at this point in time, but later on you'd realize God's wisdom is superior. God's wisdom is worth following. So I want us to pray right now. God, help me not to deviate from your word. You see, there are things that as you read the word, the Holy Spirit will impress in your heart, particularly in this 2021. 2021 is a foundational year. So in this 2021, there are things the Holy Spirit is going to impress you know, and 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 really emphasize in your spirit. So so don't be that person that 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 you know will be hard of hearing and that will not really pay attention to what the spirit is saying. So let us pray right now and say, Lord, lead me. The word, the word says that your word is a, is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So guide me with your word that I may not deviate, that I may not move to the left or to the right. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Lord, you gave us your word as a way of instruction, as a way of guidance. Father God, the Bible says the entrance of your word brings light and makes the simple wise. It says, Lord Almighty God, your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Lord, we get guidance from you. Lord. So right now we pray. Jesus, <laughs> 
Amen. Now, now let us look at verse 8. Verse 8 says, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your ways prosperous, and you shall have good success. So, so there's a success that is built on the word. It's called good success. Upon uti that every work of man will be tested with fire. Every work of man will be tested with fire. That which can burn will burn, and that which will remain will remain. So we want to build such that when the work is tested, it will remain. We want to build such that when the work is tested, it will remain. So good success is the kind of success that is enduring. It's the kind of success that does not burn when it is tested. It's the kind of success when the wind, the rain, and the storm comes, it remains it does not fall. That's the kind of success we want. We want good success. So the Bible says that success comes, that success, that prosperity comes by the word. So the secret is the word must not depart from your mouth. The word must not depart from your mouth. In other words, you feed on the word. You, you, you build your life on the word. You, you, you allow the word, you know, to, to build you up in your most holy faith. So, so we want to pray right now that, Father, give us the kind of success that is enduring, the kind of success that is lasting, the kind of success that remains, the kind of success that is, you know, from your word. So in other words, we want, uh, you know, to take our pattern of building from the word. For example, are you building a family? May it be built according to the word. What are you building in the season? Let it be built according to the word. That's what we trust in God for, that whatever we build, be it family, be it career, be it our own lives, whatever we're building, let it be built according to the word. That, that's good success. You see, this is the kind of success that that adds no sorrow with it. This is the kind of success that you don't need sleeping pills when you go to bed. This is the kind of success where you don't have to, you know, run from certain people. It's it's clean, it's pure, you know, it's satisfact, it's satisfying, you know, it's good success. So I want us to pray, God, give us grace to build according to your word that we may have good success. Give us grace to build our families, to build our lives and to build our careers, to build ministries according to the word that we may have good success. Can we pray right now? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we are praying. Lord Almighty God, for grace to build our lives, to build our families, to build our marriages, to build our careers, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that we may build according to the word of God, so that we may have good success in the name of Jesus. Lord, you said our work will be tested. Oh, I pray that when the work is tested, it will remain, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Let's build on the word. Let it be. Lord, shall not depart. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now look at Matthew chapter 15, verse 32. Matthew 15, verse 32. Um, Jesus, then Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I have compassion on the crowd because they have been with me now three days and have nothing to eat. And I am unwilling to send them away hungry lest they faint on the way. Now, I want you to see this, beloved. This is so amazing that Jesus spent three days uh, with the people. And we know that this was a multitude. We're talking about 5,000 men, um, you know, um, in minimum, uh, you know. So, so Jesus, you know, was with them for, for three days. For three days, he was teaching the, the word. And they were not eating at all. It was like a camp. This is something the Lord has laid in my own heart, you know, to do camps where we meet and we just spend all day in the word, you know, all day in the word. You know, um, the, this, the, the, Jesus, you know, um, saturated them with the word. They, they even forgot that they were not eating food in the natural. You know, food was not a priority. Now, my question is, you know, what would make a person to continue for three days straight without food? It's because they were eating something that satisfied them. That, that was overriding, you know, the natural hunger. We don't have record of the people complaining of hunger. It was Jesus himself who was moved by compassion. I want us to pray for such a hunger for the word of God that we can continue for extended periods under the word where, you know, we can sit for three hours, four hours, five hours, nonstop, you know, under the word of God. You see, you see, beloved, we need that hunger. We need that hunger, you know, where, where we can go for a weekend camp, you know, and, and I'm really throwing this in because it's strong in my heart and really be filled with the word. Why? Because this is the time when we needed the word. You know, there's so much happening. We need to be filled with the word in the season. And Jesus, you know, saturated teaching them, you know, what we call saturation teaching. He he really taught them until he leaves with a pumange and lebela pumange umpumlo. You see, and the people did not people did not complain. They did not panic. They they stayed. They stayed. Why? Because what Jesus was giving them, you know, was, was food or, or for the soul. Was filling their spirit. I want us to pray for that hunger. I want us to pray for that hunger that we would. Feel 
feed on the word of God, that we would stay. You see, people can't even stay an hour at church right now. You know, they can still, they can sit for an hour under the word. Services are getting shorter and shorter. You know, of course, for, for many reasons. But the truth is this, we are losing appetite for the word of God. The word, even the church is losing appetite. But when I read this, I realize, you see, Jesus, you, you, you know, Tina, sesikula level where if we're going to be long, sihambi sama apile, sihambi sama it's time for us to develop a hunger for the word of God. You see, what we do now, we use other things to attract people. And I'm not saying it's wrong, but I'm saying it can be substitute. We have coffee bar, you know, we have all these things to make, you know, church, you know, nice and entertaining. But you see, Jesus gave them the word. Jesus did not give them hot chocolate. Jesus did not give them Coca-Cola. Jesus gave them the word and they stayed for three days. They did not leave. They stayed for three days. It was after three days that Jesus said, uh -uh, let's give them food. Let's give them food. I want us to pray right now. Jesus, give me a hunger for your word that I will eat and eat and eat and not stop. That I will find satisfaction in your word. That I will not get full quickly. That I will not get satisfied quickly. Can we pray right now? Father, in the name of Jesus, yes, we are praying. Father, Lord the Almighty name God, for this kind of hunger, where we can sit under the word, Lord, for long periods of time, Lord Almighty God, where we can tell the Lord Almighty God the word for extended periods of time, help us, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I'm 
Amen. Now, beloved, I want you to see something right now. Um, I want to go back to our first slide. Now, when you read uh, over three, uh, over three says, and the tempter came and said to him, if you are the son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. One of the things I, I, I want to bring our attention to is that um, there were many voices at the time. When you read, uh, because this story starts from Matthew chapter 3 from verse 11, from verse 13. Uh, but I'm not going to go there right now. What I want to do right now is just highlight the fact that there were at least three voices there. There was the voice of John the Baptist who said to Jesus, no, you shall not be baptized. I shall not baptize you, but you should baptize me. And Jesus insisted because he said, this must happen so that all righteousness might be fulfilled. You see, so John the Baptist was trying to be diplomatic and all that. Jesus says, no, 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 this must be done so that all righteousness might be fulfilled. So Jesus' motivation is righteousness. Um, I can't talk on that right now, but it's probably one of the biggest things, you know, in the scripture. Um, but before we talk about that, I must first talk about, you know, the theology of heaven and earth. But listen to this right now. Listen to this. The second voice was the voice of God. When Jesus was baptized, God spoke and said, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. And the other voice is the voice we are hearing now, the voice of the devil, where the devil says, turn these stones into bread. So as we live our lives, we're going to contend with these voices. We're going to contend with the voice of those we do life with. We're going to contend with the voices of the devil. We have a choice between the voice of God, the voice, the voice of man, and the voice of the devil. In this case, Jesus chose the voice of God because the Bible says he was led by the spirit. He chose the voice of God. So as we leave, I want us to pray that we would hear the voice of God. Remember, man does not live on bread alone, but by every mouth. It's the rema, the proceeding word. It's the voice of a shepherd, really. It's the voice of a shepherd. And Jesus says in, 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 in John 10, that my sheep, they hear my voice. They know my voice. So I want us to pray right now. I want us to pray, God, give me ears to hear your voice. Open my ears to hear your voice. Because you see, beloved, we need to hear him instruct us. We need to hear him saying, turn left here. We need to hear him saying, don't do that. We need to hear him saying, start that, go there. We need divine guidance. We need divine instruction. Abraham was divinely led to the land of promise. We need to hear his voice. Amen. So I want us to pray right now. God, help me to hear your voice. L open my ears. Lord, make me the kind of sheep that hears the shepherd's voice. Make me the kind of sheep that hears the master's voice. Can we make that prayer right now? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You say, please unmute yourself, those that are on, one, on, 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 on Zoom and pray. Father, right now we are praying in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That Father God will be the kind of sheep hear your voice of God. When you speak 
you will hear. You may distinguish between the voice of men, the voice of the devil, and the voice of God. Lord Almighty God. So, Lord, we bless you. We honor you right now in Jesus' mighty name. Now, I think I'm going to take the last prayer point. Um, I'm aware of time, family. Um, so this is the last one. Um, now, Paco verse 1, it says, Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Now, I want you to see that tension, that, that, that contrast, you know, um, you know, for a religious person, this does not make sense. Why would a person be in the perfect will of God? Why would a person be where God wants them to be? And yet that place is a wilderness and it's a place of temptation. Now, when you read the book of Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3, tells us why, you know, God, you know, took the children of Israel to the wilderness. In other words, in the book of Deuteronomy, we learn the purpose of the wilderness. I'm going to read it quickly for you. In Deuteronomy chapter 8, we learn the purpose of the wilderness. So, so, so God can lead you to a wilderness, but you must know why you are in the wilderness. You see, if you don't understand why you are in the wilderness, you will curse your wilderness and you will prolong your stay in the wilderness. Now, the verse 2, Uti, don't forget how the Lord, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 2, don't forget how the Lord your God has led you through the desert or the wilderness. Uh, for the past 40 years, he wanted to find out if you were truly willing to obey him 
and depend on him. In other words, the wilderness is a place where God uh, checks the content of our heart. Um, it's a place where God tests us. It's a place where God reveals the content of our heart. It is English Standard Version, that he might humble you, testing you to know what was in your heart, whether you will keep his commandments or not. In other words, are you, are you faithful when things are okay? And then when things turn around, then you go back to your own ways. So, so the wilderness is number one, to humble you, and number two, to test the content of your heart. So, so I want us to understand that. So, so, so my point here is, is the contradiction and the contrast. Jesus was led into the wilderness because you would think if you're led by Jesus, then you must end in the palace. If you're led by Jesus, then you must land, you know, in a, in a, in, in, in a prosperous place, in a wealthy place. Well, Psalm 66, verses 10 to 12, I'm not going to read it, will help you in answering that. But a good example is an example of Abraham. He was led by God. The Bible says, and when he got to the Negev in Genesis chapter 12, you know, when he got to the Negev, the Bible says there was famine in the land. How, how can it be that you would go for so many years into a place and when you get there, there is famine in the land? When God says, now you have arrived and what you find is famine. Beloved, you can be in the perfect will of God. You and be in the perfect will of God and find yourself in the wilderness. But here's the thing, a wilderness is a temporary place. A wilderness is a place of transition. Wilderness is a place we go through. We don't stay in the wilderness. So if you are in a wilderness season right now, I want you to know there is a wealthy place awaiting you. Wilderness is a place we go through. It's not a place we settle in. Wilderness is just, you know, uh, a connection point. You know, we go to the wilderness, but our real destiny, you know, is a blessed place. Our real destiny is a wealthy place. That's what uh, Psalm 66 verse, verse 12 says. He, you took us through waters. You took us through through fire. You caused men to walk over our heads. You have tested us as, as, as silver is, is, is tried, you know, only to lead us unto a wealthy place. So whatever you go through is a go through. So what does that mean? You need to be faithful in your wilderness. You need to be faithful in your wilderness. You don't stop serving. You don't stop worshiping. You don't stop seeking the Lord because you are in the wilderness. You worship the Lord even in the wilderness. Job says, though he slays me, though he slays me. You see, beloved, um, we need to learn. You know, Habakkuk chapter 3, I think it's verse 18, it says, though the tree does not blossom, though there's no fruit in the vine, yet I will, you see, beloved, we should be that kind of people, notwithstanding, though he, you know, though he, like the three Hebrew boys, our God is able to save us, even if he does not. We need to be those kinds of people, say, God, even in the wilderness, I will worship you, even in the wilderness, I will bless your name, I will not not slack. I will not be less faithful because I'm in the wilderness. Come on, let us pray right now. That's our last prayer point. Father, teach us, Lord Almighty God, to live, Lord Almighty God, even in the wilderness, a life that is pleasing to you, a life of worship, a life of hope, is a temporary in the wilderness, where we do not change, where we do not change, we do not change, where we do not change, where we do not change, Baba <laughs> 
Amen. Beloved, thank you so much for connecting. Um, we are, you know, we are coming to an end of our morning devotion. But let me begin by saying, let me let me finish rather, let me close by saying, you know, um, when we fast, um, we deprive our body of food, but we must fill our spirit uh, with the word. So as you fast food, feast in the word. I want to encourage you, make time for the word. You know, read the word, listen to the word, share a word with someone. You see, beloved, this is the thing. When you fast, you must develop a generous spirit. Share the word with someone. You know, call somebody, pray with them, forward them a WhatsApp voice note, share a word with someone. Um, when we fast, we're supposed to be generous. So, so I want to encourage you right now. Um, so, 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 so don't, don't, don't just not eat. Amen. I think that's the message. Don't just not eat. As you are not eating, pray. As you are not eating, read the word. As you are not eating, listen to the word, share the word. I encourage you to make time, you know, to pray in the course of the day. Make time to pray in the course of the day. What we have done is just a way of laying foundation, but make times of prayer throughout the day, okay? And, and, and share the word with others. We, we, we are fasting food, but we are feasting on the word. You see, Jesus could fight, you know, the devil because he had the word. You see there, it says, it is written. It is written. That's what Jesus was, was, was banking on, the word that was in him, the word that was in him. So let's build our spiritual muscle. Many of us are going to lose weight in the natural, but let us put on weight in the spirit. Put on weight in the spirit. The Bible says that when we speak in tongues, we build ourselves up in the most holy faith. Pray in tongues. In fact, we should be praying in tongues nonstop. You know, pray in tongues. If you are at work, pray in tongues under your breath. But pray in tongues. You, you're building yourself up in your most holy faith. You're building your spiritual muscle. It's very, very, very important, beloved. So I want to encourage you to do that. Um, we are meeting again tomorrow um, at 5.30 in the morning. Uh, we're still saying man does not live on bread alone. Beloved, I want us, what, what, what this prayer point is saying is that let us trust in the Lord. Let us, you know, rest in the Lord. Let's put our confidence in the Lord. Yes, we have lots of things, you know, we thank God for blessing us, but it's very important for us not to put our trust in things that, you know, can come to an end in no time. Our God lives forever. That's where we stop. I will pray for you. Um,
and then we will close this meeting. Father, we thank you for allowing us to meet in this fashion this morning. Father, keep us between until a Lord Almighty God, um, 6 p.m., where we break the fast. Father, I pray that you would speak to us. I pray that you would guide us. I pray that you would lead us. I pray that you would show us the way. of God. So may we hear you speak to us, Lord, like you did with Elijah, when you led him, Lord Almighty God, to the brook, Lord Almighty God, cherub, Lord Almighty God, even when you led him, Lord Almighty God, to, to the widow in, in Zidon, Lord Almighty God. We, we want to pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, I thank you that, that, that Lord, uh, you continue to provide for us. When there was famine, Lord Almighty God, you provided for Elijah. Lord, ravenous birds brought bread, Lord Almighty God, and meat, Lord, uh, every morning and evening. Lord, the widow in, in, in Zidon, Zerophath, Lord Almighty God, she, 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 she had a little, Lord, but it sustained them until you visited the land with abundance. So I pray for those that are in their wilderness season, Lord, that are trusting you, Lord Almighty God, for their upkeep. Will you provide in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth? Let this day, Lord, be, be a day where our steps are ordered of the Lord, where, 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 where we receive divine guidance, Lord, where those that need assurance from you would receive it. Lord, that, that your children will hear you say, this is my son, this is my daughter in whom I'm well pleased. Father, we're not doing this, Lord, to solicit the praises of men. We're not doing this, Lord Almighty God, so that we may feel good about ourselves. It's our way of seeking you. It's our way, Lord Almighty God, of expressing our desire and hunger for you. So hear us as we pray and answer us, O Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Beloved, thank you so much, and God bless you.